Welcome, this is another in a series of five minute lectures. Today I'm going to be talking about how we think about four dimensions or what, what are ways we can think about four dimensions. In this short lecture I'm going to talk about one particular way to think about four dimensions and how you can sort of visualize this because I think it's very difficult for a lot of people. Let's start with a circle, right? And a circle and an ant. See, I got a little ant walking along the top of a circle, right? And you picture this ant walking around the circle. Well, as circles get bigger, right, and the circles grow, the tops of them will get flatter, right? So if you picture a huge circle, the top is going to appear very flat. That ant, as it's walking along, is not going to be able to see beyond the horizon. Right? And to that ant, his world, if he's stuck on this circle, is going to appear very flat. All right? Let's sort of fast forward to Columbus, Magellan, these kind of people, and think about what happens on the Earth. The Earth's a similar kind of thing. Right? When we look outside, I mean, we're, you know, we live in a bunch of hills, but generally speaking, the Earth, when you look out across it, it looks flat. Right? This is why ancient peoples may have believed, some did, that most didn't probably, but that the Earth was actually flat. But the truth is, that's not what's going on, right? The Earth, right, it's just a matter of perspective. When you, because the Earth's so big, it's, it looks flat locally, right, even though globally it's not, right? But if you think about the Earth, you know, in particular, you know, I've got a little boat picture on here, you probably can't see it, but the little boats on the thing, if it were to sail around a great circle, something like an equator, right? It doesn't have to be the equator itself, but a great circle, so the biggest part of it. And it sails around the ocean all the way, comes back. You could sail around the ocean, assuming there was no land in your way, and get back exactly where you started without ever turning around. Right? So you could go straight forever without ever turning around. Much like the ant, right, could walk all the way around the circle, never turn around and come back to exactly where he started. Right. Well, this begs the question of space. Right? And what happens is, is it possible to take a rocket ship? And you'd have to go the right direction. So you could spiral around the Earth in a boat forever if you don't go the right direction. But could you set a rocket ship and aim it exactly the right direction and shoot off in space, go forever, never turn around, maybe not go forever, but never turn around, keep going, and come back to where you started. Right? This is the kind of question that one can't help but that one asks, right? And so if you think about, for example, a circle here, part of what makes this work is that this circle so is a one-dimensional shape attached to a two-dimensional shape, right? There's an underlying two-dimensional shape that we can't see. If we go to around the Earth, the surface of the Earth is two-dimensional, and it is tied to a three-dimensional surface, to a three-dimensional object, the Earth. Right? That's sort of what makes this work. And so the question for us is, as we think about space, while it may appear flat to us, we can't perceive any curves, right? Is it possible that it is just so flat that it's constrained by a four-dimensional object, right? Possibly a sphere. Wouldn't have to be a sphere, though. You could have, there are many other three-dimensional, you know, four-dimensional sort of shapes that we could be constrained to. And so the question is, is, cur is space curved? If so, are we constrained? Is our three-dimensional space, which we can't perceive, tied to a four-dimensional object? And that's what the question I'll leave you with today.